a lot of securities thank you and over to you sir thank you sir good morning everyone on behalf of alara securities we welcome you all for the q4 fr24 and fr24 earnings conference call of rights limited i take this opportunity to welcome the management of rights represented by sri rahul mithal chairman and managing director sri arun kumar singh director projects dr deepak tripathi director technical and sri krishna gopal agarwal director finance we will begin the call with a brief overview by the management followed by q1 session I'll now hand over the call to Rahul sir for his opening remarks. Over to you, sir. Morning. Thank you. Uh, let me begin with the uh, safe harbor statement. The presentation and the press release, which we uploaded on our website yesterday, and discussions during the call today, may have some forward-looking statements. These statements consider the environment we see as of today, and obviously carry a risk in terms of uncertainty. because of which the actual results could be different and we do not undertake to update those statements periodically uh, so uh, thank you madhya and let me uh, give you a brief overview of where we started the year and where we uh, ended up the two huge challenges as as uh, you all have been following us quarter on quarter were the uh, order book on export below 100 crores at the beginning of fy and the uh, uh, impact of the change dynamics in the qa business which was to start hitting us from q1 of last fy so we were very clear we wanted to take the challenge head on we had a three prong strategy to uh, tackle and minimize the impact of these two huge challenges the first one was to try aggressively and get at least one export order which we had not got for last 4 years uh two and in the first one we got uh, two orders uh, 1200 crores mozambique plus bangladesh the second was to minimize the uh, impact of the ir element which is about two third of my quality assurance business a huge margin uh, contributor uh, so by the end of the year successively quarter and quarter we managed to get a large number of non ir uh, clients and customers where in the ratio from 2/3 to 1/3 ir to non ir has now flipped to about 50% plus on non ir clients uh, and getting huge orders like about 67 crores from pm vishkarma scheme uh, getting the orders uh, from uh, the gem portal etc and the third was to maximize the project consultancy revenue to minimize the impact of the QA uh, uh, revenue, and that too saw a, a substantial 10% jump year on year. In fact, uh, the total consultancy revenue reached a figure of about 1300 crores, which is an all-time high, which was uh, a huge satisfaction to us because it is moving in the right trend and could help uh, minimize the impact. of uh, the the two challenges so in a nutshell the direction which we had set out in the beginning of the year we are moving sequentially in the right direction and uh, having set a platform uh, in the last two quarters uh, especially in terms of the orders coming and the diversification in the qa business uh, we are sure that the coming fy we will definitely build up aggressively on this base and give you a much better set of numbers especially in terms of the ebita and the uh, bottom line so that's a brief overview uh, and as we go into specifics uh, i i will go into specific numbers and the way forward we can start taking the questions one by one with it thank you very much we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone if you wish to remove yourself from the question queue you may press star and two participants are requested to use handset while asking a question a gentle request to all participants that you may please limit your questions to one per participant and for further question you may join back the queue again we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles thank you
First question is from the line of Shreyan Smeta from Equivalis. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity. So my question pertains to, you know, the margin profile. So now that, you know, we've moved more towards the competitive base and large part of our orders, be it international or even in domestic, are on a competitive base bidding, the margins, you know, this quarter were much better over last three quarters. So can we take this as a benchmark or, you know, take, take this as a guidance going forward as well? Yeah, morning, sir. I think, yes, that's, uh, if you see the sequential trend of margins, and you're correct that both in terms of international business, these two export orders were global tenders. For the first time, maybe in the last four decades, these are global bidding orders which we got. And even in the consultancy and the QA business, the margins are definitely tougher. In spite of that, if you see the Q4 has you know, kind of stabilized at a good margin level, both in EBITDA or PAT. While it is lower, definitely YOY. But to my mind, we would aim moving forward to keep both the EBITDA and PAT margins in these level. It would be tough to maintain it, but yes, in terms of absolute EBITDA and PAT, there would be, we are aiming for a, a finite uh, appreciable growth. Margins, yes, to to uh, try and uh, defend them or protect them to as close to these levels as possible. Got it, got it, got it. Sure. And sir, one clarity on export orders. Can you give the number in terms of how much you know we've received in terms of LOA and how much is in L1, which is not a part of the current order book of Q4? So uh, the the two orders which we got were 300 crores from Mozambique, which is part of the 5700 crores order book of uh, 31st March. The 915 crores order of Bangladesh came in April, so we have not added that to the order book. But now that's also a finite order, and a contract agreement has also been signed. So in fact, all the work already has started in aiming to try and push the manufacture and export by latter part of this year. So the revenue realization starts happening. Got it. Got it. Sure. I have a couple of more questions. I'll join back in the queue. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a kind request to all participants that you may please limit your questions to one per participant. And for further questions, you may please join back the queue again. The next question is from the line of Yash Gupta from ThinkSight Advisory. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, sir, my question is on export. How export is looking out? Uh, we won some of the uh, contact uh, last week and uh, some last quarter also. So how the export uh, order books looks like and what our realization we can have in FI25? Uh, morning, Yash. So, yes, uh, you see, international business under my rights Videsh initiative has two elements. One is export of rolling stock and one is international consultancy. As far as export of rolling stock is concerned, as I said, these two orders in the last few months, 300 plus 900 crores, uh, uh, is, a, is a good step after a gap of four plus years. And we would aim these uh, uh, 900 crores from Bangladesh, these are uh, 200 coaches. And uh, 300 crores from Mozambique, these are 10 locomotives. So by, by nature of their uh, production cycle, coaches take a lesser time. Uh, and since the revenue realization happens when, only when we ship them, we are aiming to try definitely by Q3, Q4 to start getting some revenue uh, definitely from coaches and aiming to try and get some from the uh, locomotives also. Uh, in terms of further uh, opportunities, we are building for a number of uh, uh, global tenders and, and, and uh, we, did, uh, we are hoping that this trend of getting export orders on a competitive mode would uh, continue in the coming quarters. In international consultancy, we've got some recent uh, breakthroughs and the way uh, the trends are showing, especially uh, we have also opened recently our offers in the Middle East in UAE and looking for some opportunities there. Southeast Asia, there are a lot of opportunities, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, etc. So uh, in Africa, in any case, we have a stronghold, a number of sectors. So I think uh, international consultancy also both in terms of fresh orders as well as the existing order book giving revenues in the next two, three quarters, we see a healthy trend. Okay, sir. sir on the margin side, this, uh, uh, the orders which we have received recently, the margins are on the same page of 20 to 22 percent or any difference, major difference? 
You see, every uh, order would have a different range, but uh, as the factors remain that, uh, like speaking specifically of the export orders, since they were both these orders were global tenders. These were not line of credit exim bank funded tenders where the the competition is only among Indian uh, companies. So when they are global uh, tenders uh, funded by different multilateral funding agencies or the country itself. Uh, they definitely have tighter margins. So, as a whole, whether it is export of rolling stock or international consultancy, which also we are now getting a number of orders uh, which are not funded by the under the line of credit exim bank. So, they are obviously on an international bidding uh, uh, methodology. So, margins overall definitely are tighter in international consultancy as well as export. Okay, sure. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Parimal Mathani from Credential Investments. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. So, conversation on your consultancy revenue crossing 1,300 crores. Sir, I just want an okay, update on RMCL uh, going ahead. Uh, how do you see the business? And secondly, sir, uh, second question is, in terms of quality assurance, do you think the work is behind us, sir, for that business? Uh, thank you very much for your encouraging words and uh, let me uh, tell you RMCL, this has been a hugely satisfying year. Uh, the revenue, if you look at the entire year, jumped by 30% plus, it was the highest ever revenue. The PAT jumped by 37% plus, uh, 37 plus and uh, we gave a huge dividend of about uh, 80 crores. Uh, and, and we got about 51% of it. So dividend payout ratio was about 99%. So in terms of performance, uh, RMCL has really looked up and doing well. The trend has been maintained even uh, sequentially. And I see this trend continuing. In terms of specifics also, the RTC tenders, the first PPA of 900 megawatts was signed. The second LOA for 700 megawatts RTC tenders was signed. There have been uh, initiatives and these are solar power plant uh, Bilai uh, getting inaugurated under the development, uh, developer mode. So in terms of both the conventional work of RMCL of uh, supply of uh, electric traction power as well as work on the net zero renewable initiatives, RMCL is moving in the right direction. And in terms of QA, uh, the I can say with full confidence and sense of responsibility that the challenge that we took on head on at the beginning of the FY, where the impact of the change dynamic started hitting us from Q1, by the end of Q4, uh, there has been a huge shift. And as I said, we started from two third of the contribution traditionally being from IER as a client. By the end of Q4, it has uh, changed over that more than 50 to 55 percent is not on IR clients, we have got some interesting orders across spectrums, whether it is defense, whether it is power distribution, discoms, whether it is, you know, uh, the, the uh, sewage or urban infra or water or PM Vishkarma quality uh, checks on the toolkits being supplied an order of 67 crores. We got an order from the GEM for vendor evaluations, which is about 14, 15 crores. So in terms of the rapidly diversifying portfolio of the QA business, we are more than confident that we are out of the woods. Okay. Thank you. And sir, uh, just on follow up on the second question, in terms of your JV, sir, with the leading uh, global... Uh, uh, Mr. Mithani, could you please call okay. back in the question queue for further okay. questions? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Viraj from Jupiter Financial. Please go ahead. Yeah, good morning, sir, and congratulations on a good number. Thank uh, you, Viraj. My, my question is, sir, regarding export, can you give some more color? How will it plan out? With the, you talked about Nayarit Karo's Bangladesh order. So how will the revenue plan out in, uh, in, uh, in, in this? How much will come in this year, next year? You can just explain to uh, us, sir. You see, the two orders of 300 crores, uh, 10 locomotives and 900 crores, uh, 200 coaches of Bangladesh. In terms of time frame, the coaches are, uh, are quicker to make. And we recently, 20th May, we signed the formal contract agreement also. 
so now the the final designs and approvals are underway and we will start production of the prototype and manufacture very soon in a month or so we are aiming to start that bangladesh is also in need of these coaches urgently so it is a joint effort from both us and indian railways and bangladesh railways to try and push manufacturing of these coaches at least one or two rakes at the earliest it's a mix of eight types of coaches so uh, in the most conservative scenario also at least latest by q3 q4 some revenue realization must definitely start happening in terms of locomotives these are uh, require a longer time frame in uh, in in uh, uh, manufacturing so while efforts will be on to realize some revenue by end of the fy but uh, that's a, that's a huge uh, challenge which we'll try and see what best can be done as as the months pan out uh, so follow up to so this is that is it executable uh, this order book is it executable in how much time like three years two years like what would be the time of execution of the order book or wait for order book see both have time frames ranging from about two and a half to three years Uh, but that's the contractual milestones as per the contract agreements but uh, since we have got this orders after a long gap and and we've already seen the impact which n- n- not having an export rider has had on our revenues and margins on 23 24 so our aims jointly along with the client would be to try and complete these two orders at least in two fys to the maximum okay thank you sir and all the best thank you The next question is from the line of Shreyan Smitha from Equiris. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the follow up. So just wanted to uh, know the status of the Zimbabwean order which we had announced last year. Yes. So Zimbabwe, if you remember, was an agreement signed, a contract agreement right. signed in National Railway Zimbabwe and and us for uh, both uh, you know the the coach the the locomotives and uh, coaches and wagons. uh but uh, uh, and and it was subject to their getting the funding in place uh we have constantly been in touch with them and our teams have been working together they have moved forward uh, post their new government also coming in place uh, of getting the fundings moved ahead with the afri exim bank and other uh, players who are there in that so i think uh, it, i would say that they are moving in the right direction and we are very keen that they convert it into a formal loa so that we add it to our order book and start manufacture but uh, uh, as of now the only thing which i can say is that uh, it is moving in the right direction slow and steady but we are hopeful that it should get matured into something in the coming months got it got it got it sure and so lastly in terms of guidance in terms of top line if you can you know guide us uh, for this year and next year as well see both with these orders coming as well as us maintaining a trend of being a one order a day company q3 we achieved a milestone of being a one order a, com- a day company and we maintained that in q4 we got 100 plus orders totaling to 940 crores so uh, and with the way the trend is these orders both export and consultancy orders which we have been getting across sectors uh, i think we are confident that the 23 24 which is a year of consolidation and as i said at my opening comments moving sequentially every quarter we have consolidated and hung on and packed packed back the challenges and minimized the impact so i think 24 25 we are confident that you will see a appreciable growth in the ebita and the profits with a v23 24 So any number for top line, uh, say 15%, 10%, any number you would like to assign, sir? I would not like to speculate in specific numbers. It's early on, but I can say with confidence that we are a bottom line driven company, as I always have been saying in right. the previous interactions. And by EBITDA and profit, you should see a healthy growth with our V23-24, as you can see from the mix of orders and the number of orders which we are getting, uh, even though with tough margins. But the way the the uh, uh, if you even if you compare Q4 with our Q3, there's been a growth. Growth in EBITDA, there's been growth in PAT margins, uh, 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 there's been a growth in consultancy margins, there's been a growth in PAT. So with this trend being maintained, uh, you would see in terms of year on year, uh, definitely a, 
substantial growth in EBITDA and VAT. Got it. Got it. Thank you, and all the best, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of a note C, Health Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity, sir. Uh, we hear from some of the rail EPC players that the ordering pattern has changed in the past year, where they earlier used to get orders directly from rail PSUs, but now they have to deal with zonal railways. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt, Mr. Manoj. Uh, yeah, am I audible? Uh, yes, sir. Can you please use your handset? And... Yeah, one sec. Yeah, is it better now? Yes, better now. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So, see, what we hear from some of the rail EPC players is that the ordering pattern is shifting in railways. Where, you know, earlier they used to get orders from the rail PSUs, now they have started getting, they have to deal with the zonal railways now. Uh, since you also undertake turnkey projects, uh, I just wanted to hear your thoughts on this. So, w what's actually shifting in the railways now, in terms of the way the uh, tendering happens? You see, as far as rail infra is concerned, we broadly, majority of our orders are consultancy orders. If you see the order book profile uh, and breakup of our order book, uh, except the uh, erstwhile three, four year old orders of the turnkey mode for Indian Railways as a client, all our orders on the turnkey mode are primarily in 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 institutional buildings, etc. So so and 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 some of them in other areas like you know uh, 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 we've got one in station development which we did the Ayodhya station on a cost plus turnkey mode. But primarily uh, we are dealing in consultancy with IR as a client, as a project management consultant, or as DPRs, or and in terms of FSRs and uh, alignment surveys, etc. So, in terms of that, we don't see any change. Uh, we are the, the you know, uh, uh, the, the core, our core strength is in consultancy. And uh, in the last year or so, also, we have continued to get orders. Yes, the change has been, which happened about two, two and a half years back, in terms of nomination vis a vis competitive mode. That is the major change, which has been there now for about two, two and a half years. Correct, correct. No, because the EPC players were mentioning that since they have to deal with the zonal railways, uh, their uh, receivables are taking longer to realize and it was much better with the rail PSUs earlier when you know, the payment used to be more timely compared to what IR yeah, does. We are not an EPC player, in so, so we, are, we are a consultancy company, so I don't think that even if it, that there is a change in that, it's not really affecting our business model. Sure, sure, I get that. Yeah, thank you. Sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shubham Sailor from IDBI Capital. Please go ahead. Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, thanks uh, for the opportunity. Sir, in terms of our uh, consultancy order book of 2,600 odd crores, uh, what is the split between non IR and IR in this? Uh, that uh, is, I mean, you see, uh, 2,600 crores has both. Uh, in terms of uh, QA business, in terms of across various sectors. So uh, I, I can give you a total in terms of numbers, 2600 uh, crores has about uh, 700 uh, plus orders covering all my 13 verticals. And IR as a client has orders of different types in this. It has some on consultancy, uh, some, some as I said on on QA. So it would be it would it would just very difficult to give you a number on that, which is not giving a clear picture in terms of real infrastructure. If you see real infrastructure is is about is one of my 13 verticals. For real infra uh, consultancy or project management consultancy that we do, we have two types of clients. One is Indian Railways as a client, and one are the uh, other, whether it's the, the sale or the coal India or its subsidiaries or RNTPC or its subsidiaries or even pli private clients uh, like Ultratech, Jindal, etc. So, so in terms of real infra, if I see uh, covers about 200 odd orders out of a total number of 700 plus orders that, was, that I have. So that will give you an idea that real infra is an important, very important player in my total order book. Okay, and one related to that, so uh, in consultancy, you did mention in terms of execution, uh, the split between IR and non-IR is one is to one. That is for FI24 or uh, it is for this quarter? 
no, no, that I mentioned in terms of the QA portion of consultancy. You see, the quality assurance business or revenue is part of the overall consultancy pie. So the change in the dynamics at the beginning of the FY, where we were uh, hitherto for about uh, 40 years plus were doing the all the QA work of Indian Railways, uh, that opened up to a competitive mode between four players. So at the beginning of the FY, the uh, rough breakup of QA business was about two thirds as IR as a client and about one third as other non-IR clients which by the end of the year in terms of numbers and volumes and revenue has now flipped to about 50% uh, plus uh, 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 as non-IR clients and the balance as IR uh, business. Okay. And then uh, uh, this particular number of 1 is to 1 QA, so uh, uh, is this 1 is to 1 is something that is kind of bottom or probably that uh, shift is still happening and that will further... So this will continue. Yeah. As I said at the outset, this trend has been continuing sequentially. Our efforts to garner more clients have gained ground. I gave some examples of non-IR clients, huge orders which have come recently in the last 3-4 months and this Trend. We got a recent first international consultancy QA order for Sri Lanka. So, so this trend is going to continue in terms one effort is to increase the total pie as well as have as many uh, varied clients as uh, we recently got an order in the, the health uh, infrastructure department of Haryana, some Rajasthan urban infra for inspection. So, so in terms of the trend, this trend would continue. Okay, maybe one last thing. In terms of uh, I would request you to come back in the queue. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Viraman from JM Financial. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Am I audible? Yes, go ahead. Good morning. Hi. Uh, so, you know, firstly, I wanted to ask, what was the reason for the, uh, you know, steep decline in export sales this quarter? Yes, so uh, you see, uh, we had an opening order book of export at the beginning of the FY of below 100 crores, was about 99 crores. And there was no fresh order of export which uh, we received in the last four years during the COVID and the pre-COVID. We were servicing uh, the two orders which we had just got prior to COVID. One was Sri Lanka and one was Mozambique. That we started servicing in the FY 21-22 and 22-23. By the end of the FY 23, we were left with no orders. And as these countries' economies were stabilizing post-COVID, there were further, they were they were still you know arranging or, or funds to get and, and float new tenders etc for import of rolling stock. So last year was the first year where we saw opportunities coming up for fresh uh, uh, export opportunities and then that's how we bid aggressively for them and we got these two orders in the last few months. Makes sense. So you expect uh, to recognize revenues from the Bangladesh and Mozambique order from the second half of FY25? Is that about yes, right? Yes, for sure. Yes, for sure. That's that. And the, the between the two, the coaches, as I said, have a lesser time of manufacture. So they would be easier to uh, push and try and get some revenue by end of the FY. And locomotives will try, but definitely by early next FY, they'll contribute substantially uh, to the revenue. So we should we should expect uh, meeting I'm growth sorry in the next uh, I would request sorry. you to please fall back in the question queue. Okay. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Raj from Jupiter Financial. Please go ahead. <coughs> yeah, thank you for the opportunity again. Uh, my question is that uh, since we have conservative and probably on the growth part, so would we be maintaining the same dividend policy in years to come? Yes, Viraj, I can assure you that our business model, which we have been talking about in the last uh, uh, more than a year now, that we are not going to change two, three of our basic models. One, we are a debt-free company. Two, we are a low capex company. Our capex will always be in the range of 100 or 130, 140 crores, as you see from the trade. 
Three, we are not going to be, uh, uh, we are not a construction company. Our core strength is consultancy. So we'll try and see how best we can make uh, uh, EBITDA growth in EBITDA growth in profits. We are a bottom line driven company. With this clarity and stability and clear direction and vision of our company business model, uh, I, I uh, don't think that you should worry about in terms of trying to give the best to our shareholders. Our, our dividend payout ratio has been 95.2% for FY23-24 and as we grow and as we aim to grow in both our EBITDA pack, we will continue to give our best to our shareholders. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Yash Gupta from Thinksite Advisory. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the opportunity another time. Sir, so, uh, just want to check on the charter put that recent uh, uh, agreement has been done by the Indian government. So are we looking for any export consultancy into it? Uh, as of now, we don't have uh, any any uh, uh, work. Uh, I mean, we, we're not part of any uh, specific order or work there. But definitely, all over the uh, international consultancy business, as I mentioned, in, in, in international, we've opened a, a recent office in UAE and looking for pursuing a lot of opportunities which are coming up in the Middle East. Uh, UAE, Saudi, uh, Qatar, Oman, etc. So in terms of... Uh, uh, diversifying from our erstwhile geographies of uh, international consultancy in Southeast Asia as well as Africa. We started uh, Latin America last year. We got uh, orders in Guana, which we are getting good revenue from there. And uh, we are now targeting the Middle East also. So I, I'm sure that uh, we will continue to look out as opportunities if they come up in the future. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Uttam Kumar from Access Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, good morning, sir, and uh, congratulations on good set of members. Uh, sir, my question uh, pertains to uh, uh, consultancy business. Uh, so, uh, this uh, quarter we have clocked uh, margin in around 45%. Is this sustainable? Moving ahead. Uh, yes, Uttam, I think, uh, you see, in terms of the margins in consultancy, consultancy has two elements to it. One is the project consultancy and one is the uh, quality assurance business of uh, consultancy. Uh, as I explained, the quality assurance business now being on a competitive mode, all the orders that we are getting, including the non-hire clients, are through a competitive bidding. So obviously, margins, erstwhile margins, taken a hit uh, overall consultancy margins because of the QA contribution. In terms of project consultancy also, both in domestic and international, there has been uh, most of the clients are now uh, going through uh, UI or tendering mode. So in terms of the shift from nomination to competition, every quarter there has been a shift in that. So yes, uh, holding on to the overall margins is, is, is a challenge. But as you see the trend also in Q4, uh, there has been, we're still able to, we've been able to hold on to on a consolidated basis, EBITDA margins of about 27% plus, tax margins of 20% plus, and consultancy margins uh, 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 have been in the range of, uh, have in fact shown a growth from about 45% to about 50% now on a consolidated basis. So there has been uh, a mixed bag. While we are aiming at execution of a certain high consultancy margin uh, orders, uh, the orders which we are getting are at a tighter margin. So, uh, but, but in terms of trying to defend these margins or hold on to these margins as close to these levels, the effort would be continuous. Okay, sir. Thanks a lot. Uh, I will come back in the queue. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shubham Shailar from IDBI Capital. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. thanks uh, uh, for the follow-up. Uh, regarding this uh, Bangladesh order, uh, what is the total number of uh, coaches or rates that we are supposed to supply in this order? So this order is for 200 coaches, uh, totaling to about 915 crores, uh, 111 million dollars. And uh, it has eight different types of coaches, uh, both non-AC and AC. 
so they uh, they will take these coaches uh, ideally a mix of different types uh, 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 on a rake formation so but that eight different right. types of coaches okay so in terms of 200 coaches uh, uh, i'm the sorry to interrupt sir it is just a follow up i think regarding the coaches only okay so go ahead sir yeah on the 200 coaches that we are supposed to supply as per the agreement what are the terms in terms of supply in fy25 and 26 number see, you see uh, the the order is uh, it's, it's in terms of the total supply uh, over a period of two and a half years so uh, that is the the time frame for total supply uh, it is in our interest as well as bangladesh railways interest as i said they are hugely required they have a huge requirement of coaches immediately so we would jointly we are trying to see to expedite the supply as early as possible to realize the revenue in this fy so, so is it two and a half uh, for 200 coaches or it is on phases in terms of in 12 months is this number and then so, next 24 months for the total that the contract says total there is no intermediate milestones for supplies okay okay sure sir. thank you thank you the next question is from the line of hiraman from jm financial please go ahead i just had a couple more questions um so i think you know the last con call we stated we want to increase the ticket size of orders especially in consultancy any guidance as to you know what percentage uh, increase in the average ticket size we can expect this year uh, for consultancy orders yes so uh, so if you see the trend first in terms of numbers also and in terms of the order first is that we got uh, 100 plus orders uh, totaling to 940 crores in q4 so this trend of one order a day in terms of numbers has continued from q3 to q4 and we are aiming to maintain this trend in this fy also in terms of total orders also consultancy if you look at last year out of the total uh, orders fresh order that we got about uh, of 2200 crores about 1200 crores plus orders was consultancy which is about 55 uh, 58% odd so in terms of number and total value the orders of consultancy have been showing an upward trend but in consultancy there is a range of orders ranging from a few lakhs few crores to a higher uh, 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 range uh, double digit orders so it depends on the works uh, in the quantum and the scope of work the aim that's why is to have an optimum mix of both uh, low value and high value consultancy orders so that both in terms of total values and total numbers there is an appreciable growth Right. And uh, secondly, you know what is? Uh, I'm what sorry is, to interrupt, sir. Uh, could you please fall back in the question queue for further questions? Okay. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Raj from Jupiter Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah. Thank you for the opportunity again, sir. Sir, uh, uh, how will be the margins on the export side, which is with the competitive bidding coming in, in like in terms of? Uh, EBITDA and net would be your margins on the export if you can throw some light on that uh whereas the margins will definitely be much much tighter than the era where we used to get uh, orders under the uh, line of credit funded uh, projects so these are orders uh, on a global tender where we are competing like the coach tender with the toughest competitors across countries of, who are the major coach manufacturers in the world so obviously getting orders like that and these huge orders the margins are definitely tougher each of these orders has different margin and our aim will be to in, even in prove upon the margin even against the one that we bid for uh, by earlier execution so that's why even though these orders have a longer uh, time frame in terms of the contractual requirements it suits us both in terms of revenue realization as well as optimization of the cost to uh, execute them at the earliest and optimize margin but uh, uh, frankly and very uh, uh, i mean that's a, a, a actual fact that uh, global tenders getting these orders the margins will be much much tighter than the erstwhile export margins which were in the range of 20 25% okay 
So would it be still double digit in the double digit uh, space? And I would assume that it's right to uh, correct to assume that, sir. Viraj, the uh, uh, margins would be different on order to order. What you should look for is in terms of getting good uh, EBITDA and uh, PAT at the earliest from each of these orders. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Before we take the next question, we would like to remind participants that you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Parimal Mathani from Credential Investments. Please go ahead. Uh, so thanks for the opportunity again. So I just wanted to update in terms of your leasing business. Uh, can you show uh, for the light since I think the scope of opportunity is still going ahead is only much larger now? Yes, yes, uh, Parimal. In fact, uh, leasing business, what is the interesting thing is that both in terms of the growth and opportunities and trying to hold on to its margins. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, sir. I can hear you, sir. Yeah, so I'm saying that in spite of uh, one interesting development in leasing, which is like other sectors of my revenue also, that even the leasing sector has started opening up to competition from players now. And 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 with this, uh, we have, uh, uh, you know, optimized our resources and tried to get more orders. We have been getting fresh orders continuously in this business. And that is why, by optimizing the, the execution of this, uh, by optimizing the cost, we could improve upon the leasing margins. And uh, in the coming year, you would see also trying to get at higher uh, revenues and, and more, more opportunities and more clients in the leasing business. So this is, this is a huge potential and the requirement across the prospective clients has been increasing. Number of new clients both in the private and public sector have been approaching us and, and we are moving in the right direction in expanding our client base in the leasing business. So is it safe to again just a follow up on that, that there will be a faster growth in leasing business going ahead and with good margins? Uh, good growth and uh, good EBITAs. Margins may be tougher to maintain because now the competition is opening up. Uh, more in that, there were players, but there are more players jumping into it, uh, looking at the huge opportunities as more and more uh, power plants, uh, cement plants, uh, ports, uh, steel plants, etc., including uh, private players coming in, uh, in in these sectors in a big way. The opportunities are huge in this. So more players are jumping into it. So we would aim to get more orders, more revenue, and uh, more EBITDA. Margins may be a little tougher to maintain in the long term. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thanks for the follow. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Uttam Kumar from Access Securities. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Thanks for the opportunity again. Sir, what is our executable uh, timeline for uh, this guarantee projects uh, of around 2500 crores? Uh, pardon me, please repeat. Uh, so what is our executable timeline uh, for the uh, turnkey projects? Uh, we have got around 2,500 crores of turnkey projects. So what would be our ex executable timeline for this uh, turnkey projects? See, turnkey, uh, by nature on average, take about two and a half to three years on, on an average. Some some may take where so, uh, normally we, we are uh, taking very limited turnkey projects. In fact, if you see the, uh, the fresh orders in, in our turnkey uh, have been only in the range of about 500 odd crores in the, in the last uh, uh, FY. So, so, so uh, we uh, take very limited uh, uh, orders in the, in the fresh uh, orders in turnkey. So by and large, the orders that we take in the turnkey scene are areas where there is no major hindrance or no, no major you know, uh, uh, obstacles in moving ahead in the execution. So with that, I would say a rough time frame of about two and a half to three years, 
So this order book of about 2500 crores would mean roughly about uh, a three year uh, window, even if there is no, I mean, uh, with the existing order book. And the margin will be the same for uh, four, around 4% four uh, that we have clogged in this quarter. Is it sustainable for the country to be held? Turnkey business by nature have a margin ranging from 3 to 4%. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you a lot. Sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Viraman from GM Financial. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Uh, just one more question. Um, so, you know, I want to know what is your competition, um, both, you know, domestically and internationally, and any any idea of the market share of uh, consultancy for Indian for projects that uh, that we have? Yes, interestingly, uh, we can say with uh, uh, with confidence that in the infrastructure consultancy business, we are maybe the only Indian company, whether in the PSU space or private space which has all areas of infrastructure consultancy except maybe oil and natural gas under one uh, roof. So we have 13 different verticals doing infrastructure consultancy across airports, ports, highways, metros, rail infra, etc. Uh, buildings and, and all, all possible areas of infrastructure. So each of my verticals has different competitors. Some may be common because they may be doing more than one or two verticals, but I don't see any single player in the PSC or private space who can compete with us overall, which has this entire bouquet covering all areas of infrastructure. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all participants that you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Yash Gupta from Thinkside Advisory. Please go ahead. My question is on order book of consultancy. Sir, if you look at last uh, three, four years, our consultancy order book is ranging from 2500 to 2600 crores from last, I think, three years. Uh, sir, uh, when we are looking for the next leg of growth into it, like by when in next two, three years, we can reach 3500 crores? Uh, you see, Consultancy orders by nature are uh, small in ticket size. Uh, primarily, the largest orders which you get in consultancy are project management consultancy, where you get a percentage of the total infrastructure cost, say a percent of a thousand crore airports, you get a percent of that as a project management consultancy. So in terms of the the number of orders as you've seen there has been uh, a growth and and we've, we've got uh, we're trying to get and maintaining a one order a day now in terms of ticket size of these orders obviously the ticket size needs to grow in a much bigger way to be able to jump substantially uh, above this 2500 average crores of order book the what what can be definitely aimed is and what we are aiming is that while trying to get some bigger ticket size orders. Uh, the, the, the aim is to get more and more orders and faster execution. So you may find that the order book in terms of number at the end of the quarter in total value may not see a bigger change because also our growth in consultancy revenue, as I said at the outset, has been the highest ever in this FY. We've seen a growth in 10% in the project consultancy revenue. So our aim is to get number one orders while the effort to get higher ticket size orders, but also so to execute faster the consultancy orders so that the revenue realization and our positive effect on our EBITDA margins is in a much, much bigger way. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Viraj from Jupiter Financial. Please go ahead. Sir, uh, my, my question is, since we have considered probably on the growth phase now, is it fair to assume We'll be back to the days of 2010-13 where the net margins were in range of 25% and having 15% top line growth. Uh, Viraj, what we will definitely uh, aim is as we have consolidated our toughest year this year and uh, uh, taken the challenge head on and as you've seen sequentially there has been 
a movement in the right direction based on our strategy which we laid out at the beginning of the year our aim for fy 24 25 will be to give you a substantial and a healthy growth in the ebitda and the profit because that is what our aim is rather than just giving you a 15 20% growth in revenue and not being able to give you a growth in ebitda and profit so so our entire strategy whether it is in terms of getting fresh orders whether it is in terms of cost optimization whether it is in faster execution of our existing consultancy order book it is to try or or our export order book it is try and uh, see a healthy growth in the ebitda and profit uh, and that is what we are aiming for uh, for fy 24 25 vis-a-vis 23 24 Your yeah, follow-up to this, I think you, you commented that we are considering probably on a growth path. So, do you see visibility across the sectors in terms of order book order coming in, and you feel uh, the feeling is much more better than the last year? Is, is that so? I think you commented this that probably you know we are seeing some growth ahead. So, if you just give some color on that, would be helpful. Yes, for sure. When we started the FY, we were at the rate of about 0.7 orders a day. We had set a target that by end of the year we would reach uh, uh, being a one order a day company. As you remember, we reached one order a day company in Q3. We maintained that in Q4. We got 100 plus orders in Q4 at 940 crores. The trend of this year also has been. a uh, healthy we are continuing to tap on the various infrastructure sector so if you see just to give you an example in the last few months as i said we got a ropeway order in in the northeast we got airports orders in odisha we got orders uh, for iit bhubaneswar we've got a tunnel order in jnk uh, so uh, uh, across the sectors uh, highway order in maharashtra so across sectors we are seeing a healthy trend and we we'll continue to uh, we are confident that on an average basis for this coming fy we should be able to maintain this trend of one order a day while trying to get a uh, bigger ticket size orders also so that in terms of value also the entire order book sees a substantial growth thank you sir on the best thank you thank you The next question is from the line of Prashant Galpade from ISG Securities. Please go ahead. Hi, hello. Yes, go ahead, Prashant. I can hear you. Uh, thank you for the opening, sir. Uh, may I know the uh, current order book as on today, and uh, what is the break of of order book? Yes, the order book thirty first March is fifty seven hundred crores. Consultancy is twenty six hundred crores. Turnkey is twenty five hundred crores. Export is the order of Mozambique, which is about 300 crores, and the balance leasing and uh, subsidiary etc. is 300 crores. We haven't ordered uh, added the Bangladesh order of 900 crores, which came in April. So uh, uh, this is an add-on over the 5700 crores, which was there on uh, 31st March. And and uh, besides the other orders which we are getting in Q1 of this FY. Thank you, sir. Thank you. A reminder to all participants that you may press star and one to ask a question. Ladies and gentlemen who like to ask a question may press star and one at this time. Thank you. As there are no further questions from the participants, I now hand the conference over to Mr. Murid Khabra for closing comments. Uh, thank you. We would like to thank Sri Rahul Mittal, Chairman and Managing Director, Sri Arun Kumar Singh, Director of Projects, Dr. Deepak Tripathi, Director of Direct, Director Technical, and Sri Krishna Gopal Agarwal, Director Finance, for giving us this opportunity to host this call. We also thank all the investors and the analysts for joining this call. any closing remarks sir also yeah thank you mudit uh, as i said at my opening uh, remarks that we are happy and encourage 
uh, and confident by the way we stuck on and consolidated and moved on the right track in the strategy that we had laid out uh, at the beginning of the FY and we took the challenges head on. And having built up on that sequentially, uh, we see uh, a good uh, uh, trend, this, this momentum continuing in the coming FY and our two core strengths which have been there, we recently in the month of April, we completed 50 years and we feel proud that today at the at, at, as we touch 50 a milestone uh, we are still on an, uh, a positive momentum and having achieved the navratna status also a few months back uh, our two core strengths which have been there for five decades which we'll leverage on and the, the one is our strength the core uh, expertise in core design engineering design which we will continue to leverage on under our abhikalp initiative and the second is our international presence, whether in export or project consultancy under the rights with initiative. So these two pillars will be the key focus as we leverage this momentum on the coming FY. Thank you. On behalf of Alara Securities Private Limited, that concludes a conference call. Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you. Thank you.